Landing and takeoff of aircraft may be during daytime or night time. It can be during clear sky or in a poor visibility condition. But in all these situations, pilot from a reasonable height and distance must be able to identify the various features of an airport and particularly that of a runway for safe landing. In part 1 of this topic, I explained various types of markings on runways and taxiways. And in this part, we shall discuss the night time aids. Night time aids provided to the pilot for safe landing during night. And a pilot needs many information for landing like alignment guidance, height information, roll guidance and distance information. Alignment guidance is required because most of the runways are 45 meter to 60 meter wide and they are 900 meter to 4000 meter in length. When viewed from a distance, it appears like a narrow ribbon. The pilot must know whether the aircraft is heading in the correct alignment or not. If the, if the aircraft is not aligned to the center line of the runway, it may go off the runway. Then second is height information. Height of the aircraft with respect to ground level. And that is the information which is obtained by the pilot through perspective view of the surroundings. And some ground point is also communicated to the pilot indicating the height and distance. Then the third is roll guidance. Pilots should get sufficient information whether aircraft is properly leveled or not with respect to ground. If it is not leveled and it is banked in one direction, then one wing may touch the runway first and it can damage the aircraft. Then the distance information. Distance from the runway threshold. And this information is conveyed through approach light system. The color and pattern in which an airport is lighted are standardized for all airports. And the first signal given to the pilot is through a rotating beacon. Now here two search beam lights in horizontal direction and these are 180 degree apart. One beam emits green light, another a clear light. And this is the indication that the runway is equipped with ILS facilities for nighttime landing. The approach beacons can provide information on the type of airport also through the color of their lights. White and green lights indicate that the airport is civilian airport on the land, whereas one beacon emitting white light and another beacon emitting yellow light that indicates it is a water airport. Green, yellow and white, if there are three lights, green, yellow and white that indicates a lighted heliport. And if there are three lights in combination of white, white and green, that is the indication of a military airport. Airport boundary lights are spaced 90 meters center to center and these are 0.75 meters above the ground and if there is a fence then these lights are placed 3 meters inside the fence and the entire boundary of the airport is lighted by these lights. Then comes approach lighting and that is the only guidance to the pilot to correct the error of roll, alignment and level. ICAO has standardized the approach light system and it is shown here. Now this is the direction of landing and that is the center line of the runway. This is the start of the runway. The approach light extends 900 meter before the runway end. Now transverse bars here which is 4.2 meter wide and they are 30 meter center to center spacing. These are white in color. They provide, they are provided for 900 meter from the runway threshold. These lights give suitable information to the pilot of alignment and roll. A crossbar here, which is 30 meter wide at 300 meter from the runway threshold gives information to the pilot that he is 300 meter away from the runway threshold. Here it is the termination bar that indicates the end of approach light and after that you have pre-threshold wing bar which is red in color and the runway threshold just before runway threshold you have a 
runway threshold bar which is green in color leaving a gap of 60 meter from the runway edge. These approach lights are provided for 900 meter from the runway threshold but for non-precision approaches this light extends to 420 meter only. That is how they are provided. This is the direction of the landing, here is the runway and this is the approach light and here at 300 meter you have a crossbar and runway threshold is lighted which is green in color. These lights are elevated lights, all these approach lights are elevated lights and that is how they are provided. At 300 meter you have a red bar here and then at the runway threshold you have a green bar here. FAA has standardized these approach lighting system into eight standards and they are grouped in three categories. One is medium intensity systems and within medium intensity you have MALS that is medium approach light system, medium approach light system, sequencing flashing system and medium approach light system aligned with runway. Similarly, we have simplified short systems SSALS, SSASF and SSALR meaning thereby same high intensity pattern ALSF1 and ALSF2. This medium intensity systems are economy approach lighting aids which utilize 5, 150 watt lamps whereas simplified source systems have high intensity system utilizing 300 watt lamps and this high intensity system is very expensive this is most elaborate and expensive lighting system and it can be either group 1 or group 2 lighting system. Now you can see here SSALR and MALSR they are same they are same only difference is that here you have 300 watt bulbs and here you have 150 watt bulbs but when you compare high intensity approach light system with sequenced flashing lights ALSF and ALSF 1, 1 and 2 then this is ALSF 2. Now here this is different from the 1, this is ALSF 1. You can see difference here in 300 meter from the runway threshold, within 300 meter from the runway threshold you have a different lighting system in ALSF 1 and ALSF 2 is the most expensive and most elaborate lighting system. These are 30 centimeter white bar which are placed 30 meter center to center and these outside are 9 side row bars which are red on each side of the central line white bar. But in the case of ALSF you have a wing bar here and these are 3 red 1.5 meter spaced lights and these lights are same as here in the case of ALSF1. These are 21, 21 flashing lights which are 4.2 meter wide in 600 meter length. That is how these lights high intensity approach lights look like. You have a termination bar which is placed 60 meter ahead of runway threshold and it indicates the end of the approach lighting. Threshold is lighted with a green continuous bar extending across the full width of the runway and, and these are all elevated lights. This is what 4.2 meter wide and 30 meter spaced approach lights. After crossing the runway threshold, the runway threshold which is green in color, and after crossing the runway threshold, aircraft comes to the runway. The entire landing zone is provided with what is called the narrow gauge light system. Narrow gauge light system is one where the lights are placed 18 meters center to center and they are placed on either side of the center line of the runway at 18 meter spacing. They are 2.7 meter and these are all white flushed light flushed on the surface. Edge, runway edge is having elevated white lights 90 meters center to center and these are flush white lights which goes up to the next threshold and these lights indicate the runway center line. 
these are grid white lights like this but this is the length which is important so the uh, the aircraft is coming from that direction you have the approach lights here and then this is the landing zone mark landing zone lighting and the, here you have the runway edge lighting which is also white in color all these lights are white in color and then you have a center line lighting of the runway after landing on the runway the aircraft should leave the runway as quickly as possible and should move the taxiway the ta lighting for taxiway should be such that these are not confused with the runway lighting and therefore if you see here the runway and you have exit taxiway and then the parallel taxiway the runway edge is marked with white light which are 90 meters center to center whereas taxiway edge is marked with blue lights which are 3 meter away from the edge and these lights are placed almost 60 meter center to center and center line of the taxiway is provided with green lights which is 6 to 7.5 meter center to center and when, whenever there is a crossing of the runway and the exit taxiway the center line of exit taxiway extends up to 60 meter on the runway also so that is how taxiway lighting edge and center line are provided so you have the edge lighting of the taxi which is blue and center line is green and this is the runway lighting which is white in color and that is the taxiway lighting which is green in color. Here you see the green that is the center line of the taxiway. Apron and hangar area is provided with flood lights and these are so mounted that they do not cause glare in the eyes of the pilot or passengers. And therefore, these lights are placed either 12 meter above the ground or less than 1.2 meter from the pavement surface. And finally, the wind cone. Wind cone is lighted with 4 or 6 200 watt bulbs with reflectors and these are placed 1.8 meter above the top of the cone. So these are the visual aids which are provided to the pilot. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any question, you can write in the comment box.